All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you for having me on today. Um, my name is Andy Allison. I'm the offensive coordinator um, and quarterback coach at Kenyon College, um, located in Gambier, Ohio. Um, so if you guys want any of my contact information for any film, um, any slides, any offensive stuff that I talked to you about today, um, my contact information information is right there you got my cell phone uh, my email address and then obviously my twitter handle is handle as well so you know today we're gonna kind of like dive into um you know what i do offensively and what we do at kenyan our identity um and then we'll dive into some film and then obviously some um wide receivers specific um kind of drills for you guys to kind of take a look at um, and hopefully you, you can add them to um, your your arsenal of drills. So, um, you know, our identity at Canyon, um, we all like to have a identity that we, we live by. So our defense, they are like known as the dark side. Um, and so we are known as the front line, all right? So like the front line um, is gonna be like the first into like battle. They are going to be um, right at the toes of the attacking like forces, um, you know, with no fear, with complete commitment and dedication. Um, and so, you know, that's going to be who we are um, and the, the model that I preach every single day. And then, you know, up top here, um, we've got SYD, FYF. So that's kind of my own personal model for our offense. So SYD is, you know, you start your distractions, right? And then FYF is you feed your focus. So when these guys come to college, there's a lot of this distractions with extra regular with new classes, um, obviously new friends, new pretty girls. Um, so, you know, when we're doing anything football related, uh, you know, we definitely want there to be no distractions. And then obviously, you know, you see everything that goes into us completing our like mission of winning football games. So um, that's going to be that there, SYD, FYF. And then obviously down there on the bottom, you know, we battle as one. So um, this, slide here is just for some of our like recruits or our offensive guys that haven't really heard of uh, the front line, what it means, but I always have this on here to kind of help out our guys put in, put it into a more realistic, um, you know, situation. All right. So as an offensive unit, you know, I asked all of our position coaches to come up with your positional three. So what are the three things that you look for as a positional coach? Um, in your the leaders within your position of group. Okay. Um, so the number one thing that I look for out of like my quarterbacks is going to be number one is absolutely like leadership. So um, he's got to be a leader on and off the field, right? He has to be accurate. Um, so you see our top guys in in like college or in NFL, you know, they're upwards of high 60s, low 70s percent like completion rate. So, um, you know, Accuracy is definitely number two, and then number three have to have to be confident, right? You have to believe there's not a throw on the field that you can't make. All right, so those are my positional threes for the quarterback position. Offensive line, um, obviously, you know, one of the most, if not the most important position, right behind uh, like the quarterback, or you know, some of you, I think, in front of the quarterback. Um, so number one is going to be your preparation. Um, so they have to be prepared for every twist, every stunt, every blitz that they might encounter throughout the game. So they have to be the most prepared um, unit on the field. Engage. So all five of them, and obviously if we in include the tight end, um, no, all five or all six of them have to be engaged, locked into what the other person is like thinking. So that's me, number two. Number three is going to be optimistic they have to they have to like believe that no matter what um you know we're gonna recover whether it's a you know tfl for a loss of seven or a, it's a 18 yard game right you have to be optimistic and just be able to move on to the next play right away all right running backs the number one thing that i look for in my running back is your vision right can you see the hole before it opens up right it just takes a special kind of running back to be able to like, do that, right? Um, and so you've got your Zeeks um, and the 
NFL, right? Your um, Marshawn Lynch at that time, right? They had great vision to see the hole right before it opened up. Number two, at ball security. You fumble the ball, you can't play for me, right? Pretty simple. Um, then ex- explosiveness, right? There has to be an intense, right, shift up in your gears um, from the second you get to LOS to making it two right the second in the third line of, of, of defense there for the uh, for the defense. So wide receivers and tight ends, number one, have to be aggressive, right? You have to be aggressive in your blocking, you have to be aggressive in your catching, you have to be aggressive in your, your route running, you know, have to always have the defender on their heels, okay? Number two, have to be consistent, right? Have to I have to be able to like count on you that when your number is called, you're going to come up and make the play for us. Number three, has to be a, a game changer. Make me want to call your number when the game's on the line, when we need a touchdown, need a huge first down, need our two-point conversion, right? Make me call your number um, and be that, that game changer for your offense, all right? All right, so, you know, what is our – Identity. I run an air raid offense. So the reason why I like air raid is it's it's very easy to like learn. Okay, we run seven run schemes, run six pass schemes, and uh, know you're going to do your job, right? So um, obviously down there you see our power lies in the collective group, not in one individual. So the great thing about an air raid offense is you know I don't need my guys to be the fastest, the strongest or the tallest. What I need is great, great route runners and a quarterback that can be surgical with how he attacks the defense. So those are really the two main things that I look for. Okay. Now, how are we going to go about, you know, our building and maintaining that identity? Number one, have to be accountable, right? I have to be, hold yourself to a higher like, standard than your teammates and your coaches. Okay. Number two, have to prepare with uh, like purpose. So, you no, know, there's gonna, there's always gonna be a reason um, and uh, a purpose for why we're watching a film, we're watching while we're, you know, doing the drills, um, you know, why we're running the plays that we are. So we have to prepare with a purpose. Okay. Number three, you're in play for your brothers. Um, you know, there hasn't been any one person that has ever hiked the ball to himself and thrown up right touchdown pass to himself so um you know you definitely have to play for all of your brothers all right so we're gonna like do this by by playing together okay um we will like dominate right the defense at all three levels and we will suffocate them with playmakers attacking from every direction okay and we will also we will finish every play with force and we will finish every drive with points so those are going to be you know, how we do things down there. All right. So the X's and O's, the makeups of, you know, what we run here at Kenyon, um, run schemes are going to be inside zone, mid zone, which is obviously very similar to outside zone, head and pull, power, on counter, we run toss, and we also run sweep. So those are going to be the majority of our run concepts. And obviously there are things we do in special situations where you could add a couple more concepts there as well. Um, half game is obviously, you know, our bread and our butter where we make our money. So um, our pass games are quick game, yeah, drop back, play action, bootleg, have naked concepts, sprints, and then obviously screens and RPOs as well. Um, so we're going to be a no huddle, up tempo with the ability to huddle and slow the game down if necessary, and then all of our plays are going to come in via hand signal or by a like, color play call system. All right, so then obviously we finish up like, are you brave enough to be on the front line? Um, so, you know, that's going to be the like, majority of who we are, um, you know, what we do as an offensive unit um, offensively. All right, so I'll kind of like, dive into um, – just some like, film here. So we'll go through our run concepts um, and then we'll go through some of our half concepts and then I'll dive into some wide receiver like drills as well for you guys. Okay. So I utilize 
motion on about 69% of our plays, all right? So we're going to motion a lot to manipulate a defense into doing what we want them to do. So here we're playing against Whitenberg. They had an All-American here, a first-team All-Conference guy right here, and then a first-team All-Conference guy here. So we have to try and figure out how do we manipulate the defense to putting them in an advantageous advantageous position for us. So what we decided to do was motion like we do on a lot of our plays. And then our inside receiver here, so an inside release through the inside shoulder of the boundary right at the end. So that negates him by motioning that widens this linebacker out of our box. And then obviously this the safety here is manned up on him. So we are able to occupy three of, of their defenders, right? Just like simply by motioning and then taking an inside release here. And we do that with our inside zone concept. Okay? We're able to get up the hole for positive yards. And then our running back obviously has to have the vision, have the, have the power to run through tackles. Again, here in the tight version, just simply this inside release here negates him, negates him, and then obviously the safety here is out of the box. So we're able to negate all three of those guys and get up for positive yardage. So that's going to be you know what we do for inside zone. Our next run concept is going to be be mid zone. So mid zone again is obviously very similar to outside outside zone. They're taught very similarly. Um, so what we're trying to do with mid zone is we're trying to create horizontal like wash, right? We're trying to create horizontal like wash, and then our running back has to be athletic enough to figure out where the hole opens up, right? Then get vertical. Okay, so. We all understand that we don't live in an ideal like world, so we're gonna you know, right, get beat sometimes. So here, our guard gets beat. We have to have an athletic enough cat here at the running back position to make our guys right. Put your foot in the ground, get vertical of the you know, for a big time yardage. So, so had a had a true freshman in here at running back and obviously made a huge play for us as well. Okay. My favorite concept is probably pin and pull, right? It's the easiest concept to really teach. Um, and it, and it allows for big time plays. So here the defense is aligned already with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys on one side of the our formation. So as a offensive coordinator, that's ideal, but you know, I'm greedy. I'm trying to figure out how maybe we can get one more guy on over to the, the field side. So what do we do? Motion our D receiver. All right. So with our, you know, jet motion, what comes with that is we now have all nine guys on one side of the D of our offensive formation. So I'm a huge, huge believer in running to the boundary, obviously running where like numbers are less. So the, the rules with pen and pull are pretty simple. If you're covered, you're pulling. If you're uncovered, you're going to um, you're dig, you're going to block down. All right. So here, obviously I have nine guys up to the field. So we do run pen and pull, right? They're, outnumbered big time play here for us. So again, our quarterback on 98% of our run calls will have an RPO to tag here. So he's got the opportunity to run our hitch concept out there for the RPO with our fan tag, which means that our tight end here is going to release upfield and you're going to block our second level offender. All right. So our quarterback just has to like determine, Hey, do we, we like the RPO or should we hand the ball up here? 
Okay. Obviously, we like our like numbers here to the boundary and the ball off up the field. Big time play. Pretty simple there. Okay. We also run power. So everybody that runs power kind of knows that power is going to be um, about creating and displacing gaps. So that power, you know, we're trying to run downhill, get vertical as quickly as we can. So here with power, again, this is one of the rare instances where we didn't have an RP O called. It's just, you know, your straight power running downhill, create and displace gaps, get vertical for a big time play. Again, here, this is our true freshman, hell of a player. Um, I'm not not too biased on, you know, when you come in, you got to earn, earn your time. I don't care if you're 18 or you're 28, right? The, the best player is going to play. All right. Our next run concept here is going to be counter. So the counter is going to be all about misdirection, right? So how many different things can I make the defense look at and kind of lose track of the like football, make them get out of position. So here we're kind of in our wildcat formation here with our backup running back here. He was our wildcat like quarterback. So what we do, we motion again, like I do on about 70% of my plays. And we use our motion guy here as a no decoy. Okay. Sacrifice him. He was okay. But that misdirection allows us to get up the field for a big time play. So the defense obviously has to think about, hey, are they going to hand it off on the jet sweep? Are they going to hand it off to our running back or is the quarterback right going to keep it? So making them think about multiple things out of position equals a big time play for the Kenyan Lords, right? Another thing we will do is we do run like jet sweep. And I am very particular about when I call this concept. So here I call it in a right third and one situation. So all I'm asking our guy to do is take going or get us at one yard. All right. So it's really simple. Sweep is going to be a horizontal raise to the edge of the, the defense. So again, our sweep now some teams will hand this ball off. I will always 100% of the time will toss it. Now we toss it because if he happened to reach out this ball, it's an incomplete pass. So for your guys that want to run sweep this way, make sure you talk to the um, head referee at the beginning of the game. Just kind of let him know in your pregame, hey, you know, we are going to run toss. It will 100% be a flip up in front so that if there is any miscommunication, any problem, if if he drops it, it needs to be ruled an incomplete pass. So um, make sure you guys take care of that as well. So here, again, horizontal raise to the edge of the defense. Now, ideally, our fullback here is out of, of position. He's got his eyes in the wrong place. He's looking here. Right, this guy, simply on his alignment, is already out of Position. So we don't need to worry about him. But this fullback is one on one here with the safety. Okay. If we do have them messed up, make sure this guy is athletic enough to make up for a mistake like this. So obviously, our guy, Justin, Justin Bosch from Miami, like Florida, big time player. Okay. Got the huge first down on third and one. All right, so those are the types of right situation that I want to use to weave in. All right. Up next is going to be, you know, our pitch, our toss. All right, so but that, again, right toss is really simple. We're trying to get wide outside of the box with speed and obviously – race to a horizontal point. So here we're obviously sprinting to the front pylon as fast as we can. So the toss will only be effective if you have receivers out here that are good blockers. Now, 
as a former like receiver, as a former receiver like coach, it's huge and on me that my receivers are really, really good blockers on the edge. Here was not great. Okay, obviously maybe motion though, misdirection, option toss. Okay, because our blocking wasn't not great on the perimeter. Obviously, it's not great yardage, but again, these are still the types of things we want to do within um, this run game offense as well. All right. Now, diving into some of our special young formations. This is going to be our heavy you know, goal line package, right? We call it Rocky. So, at Rocky, I've got a, you know, a five linemen, two tight ends, okay, three running backs. So, I can either do a fullback dive, right? Or we can run outside zone this way or this way. It's going to be up to like the quarterback based on the front, based on the box. He's got a one word call that will tell the entire offense was where we're going. Okay, we use this a lot in right short yardage situations. Now, again, it's not perfect, right? Doesn't work every like, time, but here you can see, okay, we, we probably should have ran it. Last year, quarterback decided to just do a little dive, right? Not great, but again, we want to continue to be different with how we do things. Here's another look at it. Okay, again, here just ran our dive. Got in real late. Big time high for us there. More Rocky here as well. All right. We will also run QB like sneaks. So here I'll go empty a lot. What we did here was a you know, fake, fake audible check, which our quarterback will do often. He's got 100% freedom to like, check us into the – right play if he doesn't like what we're calling. So here I call this thief, no fake check. Right so comes up uh, under like center. Here we sneak touchdown. Pretty simple. Have as little guys in the in the box as possible when we're going empty. Quarterback has to time it up. Right? Make sure he sees the defense relax and like communicate. And we get in there. Okay. We will also try and like run draw. Honestly, guys, we're not great at draw. Something we got to get you know, better at. But again, with draw, right, we sell the drop back, try and get vertical. But again, it's not great if we, we don't get enough pressure up front. Right. So that's going to be one of our huge emphases in training time. Is really working on our draw play. So, also have draw. Okay. We also <clears throat> we'll get into the the power eye. So, before when we were in three running backs across here, we're in just your your straight power eye. So we do that. Run downhill, get vertical, big time play. Our guys love lining up in this. Really, really fun. Not your traditional, obviously, air raid run scheme here. Had a, one of our own linemen here, had one of our own linemen, and then here's our tailback. So we were able to get vertical, make time play. Awesome there. Again, we'll continue to run this in sh short yard situations. Our guys love doing it. Make time play, got to get in there. Hey guys, miss. <clears throat> okay, our next one here is called Rambo. So the first one here with the three running backs across with Rocky. The previous one in the Power Eye was Jericho. Okay. This one here is is called Rambo. So with Rambo, we're going to be in our Wildcat formation. Our quarterback has the option to. Run right behind our two tight ends. Run left behind our running back here, receiver, and like fullback. Okay. Wildcat 
quarterback, again, just trying to get one yard here. So here we got running back, tight end, tight end, right tackle, right guard, center, left guard, left tackle, and fullback, wide receiver. All right, so we do have passes out of this as well. But here, obviously, we're just running the ball here with our Wildcat quarterback. All we're asking you to do here, right, get two yards, get one yard, and we're good to go. Same thing here. He's got the opportunity to either run left, run right, based on the box he gets. Big time play here for a near first down on third and four. Okay. So that's Rocky, Rambo, got Jericho as well. Our last thing that we do here is going to be our blind toss. So with that, have our wide receiver guy here, right past this, pin on the team. What do we do here with the quarterback? Right, we pump our drop back. We pump our quick game, little blind pass here, blind shovel. All right, get vertical. So you know, I'm going to continue to put things like this into our our offense that are fun, that are different, that our guys like running, that presents problems for the defense running sideline to sideline. Okay? So that is going to be all of our run schemes. We'll dive into a, our pass game right now. So our quick quick game is going to be all major cities with um with word association. So Houston is going to be hitches. Yeah, Sacramento is going to be our slant concept. Yeah, yeah, Fargo is going to be our fade arrow concept. So I can either call them one concept all across the board, or obviously you guys know at this level you're going to get split field coverages. So I can call them man beater on one side and then uh, like zone beater on the other side. So here I called called Fargo, which is going to be our 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 fade arrow, and then Sacramento for the field, which is our slant concept. So with that, every play comes in left to right, like you read uh, like books. So here we got Fargo. So he's got the fade, he's got the arrow, and then here slant concept. So for the quarterback, he just has to figure out which which side he likes the best and work that side. So here, here he liked our one on one matchup here with our you know, true freshman receiver. Like this matchup, two freshmen. No fade ball, let's get vertical. It's a play. I'm a, a very aggressive right play caller. So if we got the opportunity to right, take advantage of one on one matchups, we're gonna like, do that every time and then quarterback has to have the confidence and make plays like that. Okay. So I will also involve the running back a lot in our, our quick game concepts. All right. So with that, we run the spot concept a lot. That's probably our most popular concept. So here with spot, our tight end here at the corner. Okay. Our, Wide receiver has the spot, and then our running back is going to be in the flat. So here, we're calling this on third and two. Hey, we obviously have an, another concept down here, St. Louis, which is our smash concept with the slant route. So here, the quarterback realizes third and two. Okay, we're probably going to get man coverage. Okay. They brought seven. Who's, who's matched up on the running back if they bring seven, right? Probably nobody. Get the ball out there to our running back. Make guys miss. Let's get vertical. Big time play. So, again, I like to have running backs that are great catchers of the football as well because I will utilize you guys often in the our passing game. Okay? Here with drop back, we run a lot of drop back as well and here we were going up uh a secondary that had a hard time 
exchanging routes and passing them off in the secondary. So I will often switch up routes for like receivers. So here we ran Colorado, which is our dropbacks uh, like series. So our outside receivers have comebacks. Okay, our inside receivers have verticals up to seams. However, because right cast had a hard time exchanging their like, routes, I tagged it here with switch, which switched up the routes for number two and number three. So now he's going to be up this ash. He's going to be opposite up this ash. And everything remains the same on the outside. So for the quarterback, he just has to figure out who's going to Right, open our tight ends wide open off the field, as was our Z receiver. Okay, again, here, right, he's got the opportunity. Let's get vertical up the field. There we go. All right, you know, I will also call just your regular, simple NFL drop back scheme. So, here, all we did was a double post. All right, so I'll take a shot here on person 10 from the opponent at 36. Great time to take a shot. So we have to have playmakers in these positions that can go off win one-on-one matchups and have a like quarterback that can put the ball where it needs to be. All right, so here we just ran double post. Okay. Objective for our inside receiver is to run across the face of the near safety. Right, pull him away, which he does. He's out of position. That leaves us a one-on-one -on -one matchup here with our outside post. When your matchup, right, big time, big time play for us. That's perfect. All right. Up next is going to be our bootleg. So with all of our bootlegs, I sell mid zone. It's the easiest to kind of replicate. And in order for our offensive line to remember that this is a like pass concept, even though we're calling our mid zone play, I will always here take it with lock. So if our offensive line here is lock, it means that they can not go more than three yards down the field. All right. So here, and we tag it mid zone. And ideally we're doing this with a nice one-on-one -on -one matchup here with our receiver and their DB. So again, hard to see here. You've got your ISO matchup right here. Okay. Quarterback realizes he's probably going to have pressure in his face. So your eyes always have to come first here with the quarterback. I find your guy, reset, make the play, big time first down. Off naked. Okay. So I'm sorry, off boot. These are gonna be our like naked concepts. So our like naked concepts are what we call tools. So our tools have an ISO route with our one on one receiver here. So if our quarterback like this this matchup, like the route, we're quick, one, two, three, punch, press, and throw, and the ball's out, right? If he does not like the matchup, he is going to reverse out, and then our number two has the drag, our tight end has the chip release, then our wide receiver has a comeback on the outside. So here... I've got nail, our first tool. I've got an ISO route up top. Quarterback likes it. Punch press throw. Easy money. First down. Right? Big time play here by our receiver. Quarterback, punch press throw. We work the drill every single day. Punch press throw. Big time play. All right? Let's say that he does not like the matchup here with our one on one receiver. So so obviously he gets off it. All right. 
doesn't like it. Go still pump it. Right, not there. Freeze the defense. Reverse out. Find your safeties. There's our tight end. Up the field. Easy money. So those are going to be our tools. We do have some more, obviously. Um, but sprint game, I'm a huge sprint out guy. So the only thing, you know, the main thing we're trying to do with our sprint out is we're trying to high low the corner. All right. So for our our quarterbacks, what I tell them is anytime we're trying to high low the corner, as soon as you see him retreat, this has got to be an automatic throw 100% of the time. All right. So here, quarterback, he sees the corner retreat. That's in 100% throw every time for, for 12 yards. So it's just your simple smash concept there. Okay, sprint out, quick throw. Make guys miss, get vertical. All right, our three by one sprint out here. Again, we've got a wide angle hitch. Okay, we've got a whip by number two and then a, a corner by number three. So we're still trying to high low this overhanging defender. All right, so for the quarterback, again, read the defender. He's sitting here. We're going to throw the comeback. Big time play here. Throwing that comeback on the sideline, like perfect ball. Okay, sprint out is going to be huge in our offense. Um, and then, obviously, our screen game as well. So with our screen game, I will often like, tie it onto – our job pack concepts. All right, so with that, here I've got Arizona, which is one of our drop backs, and then I tagged it with Busta, which is our running back player screen to the left, and then a quick game concept as well. So there's three really things here going on that the defense has to like look at. However, this is a situational call we have I just hit the team on a huge play. So me expecting right zero pressure. Let's hit him with a screen, expecting the zero pressure. We got it. Screen, pretty simple. Out the gate for touchdown, right? Football is not, not difficult. You know, trust your instincts as a play caller and then live with the results. Again, zero pressure, make them run up the field, big time play. Last thing we do here is kind of our double screen. So I can give the quarterback the option here to either throw a wide receiver, a tunnel screen, okay, or we've got a running back layer screen here as well. So obviously we're sending these guys here, sending these guys here, quarterback takes which side he likes. Whichever side he likes, he's gonna right, pump the opposite like way. So here we like the field. Let's pump this flare. And then going this way, he's not quite sure. Come back here, throw our the tunnel screen. Then we're or vertical off the field for 12 yards. All right, so we'll continue to do creative, unorthodox things like this in our air raid offense. But, you know, our air raid offense is going to be made up primarily of air raid concepts. So that's going to be the, you know, heart and kind of soul of what we do offensively. Um, I'm going to try and show you guys here some of our wide receiver drills that we run. These first ones here are going to be, you know, our team here specifically. So the first one, okay, is just going to be your wide receiver. You know, your, your stationary hand blocking and the punching. All right. So with that, you've got your receivers right down on two knees. All they're, they're doing is 
hand placement with the force real quick. You now five times and rotate. Okay, you can get through this and we want them close, you know, almost to have their face mask on the dummies so that they really get that game-like feel um, of being in engaged with a defender, linebacker, right, safety, DB, whatever it is. All right, so that's going to be our first drill there. More blocking here. So, like, blocking is obviously really big for me um, in, in this offense. Our guys here down on the bottom, okay, they're going to have to, to to catch the med ball. Okay, there. Real quick. So, again, it's just allowing them to have to redirect, focus on something coming at them, right, displace that thing, and then move on to, you know, your target. Again, here, right, those shuffle, shuffle block. Get the med ball out of the way, and then move on to the uh, next target. Pretty simple, but, again, we're going to do these every day so that our specialists are improved, right, blockers on the – Exterior. Okay. This one here, again, is just going to be your shuffle block, is what we call it. So shuffle block, angle blocking. So, again, we don't necessarily want the receiver so to cross over again, but you're going to have to block at an angle, and based on which way you're trying to run the ball, make sure that your hand placement, your arm placement, and your shoulder placement are correct to – allow the running back a clear avenue to where we're trying to hit. <clears throat> now we look at it here, coming the other way, more shuffle block. Again here, by receivers, shuffle, shuffle, make contact, then and drive them, and them back to the whistle. Mirror blocking here. So, Again, right this you can utilize everybody at this, the uh, same time if you have um, enough like room on your part of the field. Oh, with this you're gonna have one partner being the dummy, other person being the blocker, and the objective is to mirror which way your your defender is like going in the obvious. We block them according. Okay, so here we go here. Again, mirror guys. Yeah, follow them on the whistle you're blocking, right? These aren't meant to be overly exhausting. They're meant for more technique, hand placement, you know, feet placement, all that good stuff. Good stuff. So here, again, just on the whistle, they're gone. On the second whistle, right, you're going to attack vertical and blow. Okay. Heading into the quick, you know, relative tech. So here we've got abbreviated the routes with the ball coming at him real quick. Ideally, I would see you on catch the ball, but we're going to sh right, shorten down the routes and we'll aggressively right, get to our our normal route depth. So this is just kind of the get the juices flowing with the hands a little bit. Involve the quarterbacks with this one if you want. Two lines going. Quick routes. Post curl with all those dig routes on the inside. Work through this as much as you can. Get the juices going. Very simple. All right, so here we're obviously going to utilize the the quarterbacks more of the field. So here we're just working on sprint out with the, the three routes. We've we've got our the our drag route coming across, and then a, a front side concept. So you can use all of your receivers, all three quarterbacks, make the catch, make the throw. Again, we sprint 
a lot in our offense, so we want to make sure that we are working on these techniques daily. And again, you can get a lot of reps in if you utilize three three routes, three quarterbacks. Keep it going. Just have your your quarterback work down the line, make all three the like, throws, and then we keep going down. So that's going to be our sprint out tech here. We got our the second level misdirection or a yard after catch. We got cone. You can use uh, like coach. You can use an extra like defender. If you have DBs, use them. Obviously, but here we're just working on making guys miss after we catch the ball. So, yeah, coaches, you can have a like, quarterback actually like throwing the ball if you want. Otherwise, you can just work after the catch. All right, we're here. Okay, on the let's hope. He's going, he's gotten, makes you miss based off of your movement. All right, so again, that's going to be ideal for the guys you can with the ball in their hands a lot. <clears throat> so here we're just doing some low red zone high point drills. Again, quarterbacks, you know, I'm, 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 I'm telling the quarterbacks to put the ball up where they can't, we're the defender. I can't get it. So, ideally, I want them to put up high, high point. High receivers work on out jumping that defender, making the play. Again, we shorten it down to really save their leg a little bit, make the play. More little red zone high point drills. Same thing here. We we're just looking at. Different landmarks, big time play there. All right, so that's going to be you know the a handful of the drills we're doing. Um, these other ones here, you know, we filmed with a couple of young cats um, just early on here in the uh, quarantine time. So again, the like the first thing I'll do with receivers every single day is. It's called tennis ball. Yep. So after like that is going to be our focus. So some people call it focus, easy up, whatever it is. So we go through really five catching drills. The first one is just going to be your typical over the shoulder. Your second one is going to be right hand only with palm in. Your third one is going to be left arm only over the shoulder. Your fourth one is going to be your back shoulder. Then we have high point, and then we have the sideline toe tap. So we'll try and hit all, all those right now.
Yeah, this one here, guys, is, is going to be our four cone drill. Um, so I like this one. It's all about over exaggerating hip depth, right? Opening up those hips to hit our next target each time. And as we get back through the end of the drill, you know, you're focusing on the catch at the end with the football. Obviously here, you know, you do it one way, then switch it up and do it the next way. Work on opening up both hips. Rapid fire through these things. Any time. Okay. Next one here is, is going to be our five cone drill um, or the star drill. So again, we are still working on opening up our hips, but now we're working on coming back down at a 45 degree angle that's going to really force you to open up your hips so you can work on you know your post routes, your dig routes, your post corners, all that good stuff. All right, um, one of our last drills here is going to be around the world, outside the frame. So you've got a like, receiver here, the quarterback's right in front of him. Okay, what we're trying to do is throw the quarterback outside of his main frame of like catching. So the quarterback is going to put the ball high and outside, okay, medium and outside, and then no one outside, so let's call this around the world. DB throw by, so I think probably everybody runs this. One of my favorite drills. Obviously, if we're the outside receiver trying to run a like dig, trying to run a five yard in, but we've got man coverage by our DB on the inside, we have to use that inside arm to grab the hip, right, grab the shoulders, grab the waist of the DB, throw in the opposite. Your, your direction you're trying to go and go about your business.
that's what here at yeah, top of the route. So with this one, you know, you guys can hold a, a broom. We've got a little PVC pipe that we use. I can't. So the objective here is to make sure that your receivers at the top of their route are low to the ground and are getting in and out of their breaks as quickly as possible. All right, guys. Um, so that's going to be, um, you know, all of like the drills that I have for for you guys for today. Obviously, you can reach out to me. Um, you know, let me know if there's anything else that you guys um, let, I want to talk about. Anything else that you saw on film um, that you want more information on? Um, and I'd be happy to you know meet with you whenever we can.